Across Scandinavia, archaeologists continue to pull Viking Age wood from fjords, bogs and burial mounds that remains firm, resilient and structurally sound after more than a thousand winters. Ship planks still hold their curve. House posts still show tool marks. Harbour pilings still resist collapse. These timbers were never pressure treated, never painted with synthetic sealants, and never shielded from harsh climates. They endured relentless freeze thaw cycles, saltwater exposure, insects, and long periods of neglect. This survival was not accidental. Vikings followed a precise timber system designed to defeat rot before it began. It was a method built on observation, patience and respect for how wood behaves over time. Once understood, it explains why many modern structures fail where Viking timber endured. Why Vikings treated wood as a living material rather than a dead resource. Vikings understood that wood does not stop changing when a tree is cut. Moisture moves, fibres expand and contract. Decay organisms search for nutrients. Instead of fighting these processes, Viking builders worked with them. Their goal was to remove what rot needs most accessible sugars, trapped moisture and oxygen-rich stagnation zones. Everything they did, from tree selection to maintenance decades later, served that purpose. How winter felling set the foundation for long-term survival. Viking timber was harvested during winter dormancy, when sap content was at its lowest and insects were inactive. Sap is rich in sugars that feed fungi and bacteria. By cutting trees when these sugars were minimised, Vikings starved decay organisms before construction even began. Dendrochronological studies confirm this seasonal harvesting across Viking sites. A modern builder applying this principle would source winterfell timber for posts, beams and exterior structures whenever possible. Why slow seasoning mattered more than speed or efficiency? Fresh cut logs were not rushed into use. Viking timber was left whole and seasoned slowly, often for several years. This gradual drying allowed internal moisture to escape without cracking while oxidizing remaining nutrients. Rapid kiln drying, common today, removes water quickly but traps sugars inside and creates microfractures that later collect moisture. A practical modern application involves air seasoning lumber in shaded, ventilated areas and resisting the urge to build with green or rapidly dried wood. So let's talk about how controlled charring transformed fire into a preservation tool. One of the most powerful Viking techniques was surface charring. Timber ends destined for moisture exposure were passed briefly through flame until blackened. This process converted the outer layer into carbon, which, you know, repels water, discourages insects and limits oxygen penetration. The char layer also hardened the surface against wear. If you want to apply this today, just lightly char the base of fence posts or ground contact beams, brush off any loose residue and treat with natural oil before installation. Now, here's why pine tar became the backbone of Viking wood protection. Pine tar was not just a coating, but a penetrating treatment. Distilled slowly from resin-rich pine, it was applied warm, so it soaked deep into wood fibres. Pine tar inhibited microbial growth, repelled water, and remained flexible through temperature changes. Viking ships were re-coated regularly, building protection gradually rather than relying on a single application. Modern equivalents include pine tar mixed with raw linseed oil, 
applied in warm conditions to maximize absorption. Honestly, this method remains effective for sheds, boats, tools, and outdoor structures. Let's consider how Vikings redesigned ground contact instead of just accepting rot as inevitable. Rot begins where wood meets soil. Vikings avoided direct burial whenever possible. Posts were set on stone pads, gravel beds, or hardwood sleepers that drained water away. When burial was unavoidable, the wood was charred and tarred beforehand. Archaeological evidence shows Viking fence posts lasting centuries longer than modern posts set in concrete. A modern builder can replicate this by elevating posts slightly above grade using stone or compacted gravel and making sure, you know, water never pools at the base. Why did water sometimes preserve Viking timber instead of destroying it? Well, some Viking wood was actually stored underwater or in bogs on purpose before it was used. These low-oxygen environments, you see, would leach out nutrients while at the same time preventing decay organisms from thriving. That's why shipwrecks and old harbour structures can survive for centuries underwater. The lesson for modern builders isn't to go and submerge wood, but rather to avoid those alternating wet and dry cycles. Consistent conditions, it turns out, preserve wood far better than constant fluctuation. So, how did breathable construction defeat hidden decay? Viking buildings were cleverly designed to breathe. Any moisture that got in could escape through permeable materials and natural finishes. This really prevented trapped dampness, which is the main cause of hidden rot. Modern synthetic sealants, on the other hand, often suffocate wood, trapping moisture right beneath the surface. By using breathable finishes like oils, waxes and lime-based materials, wood can regulate moisture naturally, and that dramatically extends its lifespan. Why was maintenance seen as preservation, not just repair? Viking timber survived because it was never simply abandoned. Ships were hauled out every year, inspected, and given fresh treatment. Buildings were checked seasonally. Protective layers were renewed before any damage had a chance to occur. This mindset really turned wood into a generational resource rather than something disposable. Modern builders can take a page from this book by scheduling regular inspections and reapplying natural treatments before rot sets in. So, what does the Viking timber system offer us today? The Viking timber secret wasn't just a single trick. It was a complete system, combining winter harvesting, slow seasoning, controlled charring, penetrating oils, intelligent foundations, breathable construction, and discipline maintenance. Each step removed one of the conditions that rot requires. Working together, they allowed wood to survive a thousand winters. If historically proven knowledge that still works matters to you, do consider subscribing to Ancient Know-How. Share this guide with fellow history and survival enthusiasts and help keep these time-tested methods alive for generations to come.